to discuss this further, we talk now to Dr. Richard Munang, the Africa Region Climate Change Coordinator for the UN Environmental Program. Welcome to Africa Live. Now, this latest conference, we're looking at a theme of Africa on the rise. What essentially is the message that they were trying to deliver? Uh, you know, Africa's vulnerability to climate change has been clearly established. In 2011, the uh, East Africa was hit by droughts, affecting about 30 million people. And recently, in 2012, the Sahel was hit by climate change, affecting about 100 million people. Now, with COP21, which is where the world will come together and agree to foster a legal instrument so that all countries in the world can be able to reduce emissions. This conference was pretty much to look into how can Africa, with increasing population projected to reach about 2 billion in less than 37 years from today, cope with ecological degradation, cope with the changing climate which is affecting food security, drought, and it was to look at opportunities because climate change also presents opportunities, to look at how we can be able to invest in uh, approaches and actions that can help move people up the poverty ladder and at the same time ensure that jobs can be created for the uh, unemployed in the continent. So how exactly can Africa cope with these challenges, considering especially a growing population? Well, there are opportunities, and these opportunities have got to be harnessed and tapped into at the moment. Opportunities like investing in our ecosystems, ensuring that our forests can continue to provide the uh, services, which are quite very vital, because forest, for example, is an ecosystem. So watersheds, uh, keeping our waters flow, which have been used for agriculture, used for drinking. Because climate change projections also show that about 70 million to 200 million people will be water insecure in the continent by 2015 to 2020. And even crop production will reduce up to about 20% in 2050. That's less than 37 years from today. So to see how we can be able to invest in approaches in such a way that we can be able to advert this um, bleak picture for the continent, the meeting uh, was also to ensure that institutional capacity of countries can be built, that countries can start putting climate change in the vision of national development, like investing in education, training um, uh, students in such a way that they can be able to understand that the changing climate can actually be used to create jobs, what we call the green economy, which the United Nations Environment Program has peer-headed with other UN partners, that you can be able to move along a sustainable pathway by investing in renewable energy like wind, like solar, like geothermal, and like hydro. Because reports even show that Africa is not harnessing its uh, geot geothermal and hydroelectric uh, power. For example, we're using only about 8%, and we have potential up to about 80% to use as compared to Latin America that is using 30% of the hydroelectric power. We also have potential to invest in uh, wind power, in solar power, and as a result of doing this, this could create jobs. So that is actually the opportunities that exist as a result of the changing climate, despite the negative impacts that climate change is bringing to the continent. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. A lot still to discuss, looking at those challenges faced by African countries. But thank you very much for your time. We're speaking there to thank Dr. Richard Wenang for the UNDP.